Hey there, I'm Dr. Ethan, and today we're going to be talking about SCP-1155, Predatory Street Art. Now, this little number falls under the object class of Keter, so you know we're in for a wild ride. Let's dive in and see what kind of trouble this piece of street art can cause. SCP-1155 is currently being contained in a disused parking lot next to an abandoned shopping center in the city metropolitan area. To ensure its containment, the building has been marked as condemned and access to the area has been restricted by Foundation personnel posing as security guards from the front company. Civilians have been discouraged from entering the site and provided with standard cover story 47, structural instability slash sinkhole, if they inquire about the restricted access. SCP-1155 is constantly monitored by motion tracking security cameras to ensure its whereabouts are known at all times. In the event that SCP-1155 is observed to vanish, Mobile Task Force Pi-1, City Slickers, will be immediately notified. Personnel have been instructed not to routinely attempt to view SCP-1155 directly and instead, any observation must be conducted remotely. Direct viewing of the image of SCP-1155 instigates a compelling urge to examine it further in anyone who sees it. Those affected describe a sense of anxious fascination and an impulse to move closer. This compulsion can be resisted with difficulty, particularly if the individual is aware of SCP-1155's abnormal characteristics. When a person approaches within 2 meters of SCP-1155 and is not within the line of sight of another individual, they become the target of a violent attack. This assault results in severe lacerations, dismemberment of extremities, partial or complete removal of soft body parts, and head trauma consistent with the injuries caused by a large beak and or talons. The attack typically lasts around 6 seconds, after which both SCP-1155 and the victim vanish, with SCP-1155 reappearing elsewhere in a relocation event within seven days. It has been observed that the attacks can be stopped before SCP-1155 and the victim disappear by restoring visual contact with the victim, although this action is not recommended, for further details, refer to Incident 1155A. Efforts to track the whereabouts of victims by outfitting test subjects with GPS locators have been unsuccessful. Through systematic interruptions at predetermined intervals, it has been determined that the attack follows a specific sequence. The victim is initially restrained, followed by the removal of the eyes and tongue, swiftly succeeded by the amputation of the hands and feet. Subsequently, the victim is disemboweled, and the intestines and stomach are extracted. Death typically ensues from shock or rapid blood loss only if the attack is interrupted by visual contact. The fate of victims who disappear with SCP-1155 at the conclusion of the attack remains unknown. Following Incident 1155-B, it has been observed that completely enclosing SCP-1155 has a tendency to hasten a relocation event. Revised procedures now recommend the evacuation of the immediate area surrounding SCP-1155 to the minimum distance necessary to prevent contact with the general public, unless SCP-1155 manifests in a high visibility location or anywhere where preventing public egress is impossible. SCP-1155 cannot be permanently contained by any known means at the present time. Approximately every two to four months, SCP-1155 has been observed to spontaneously relocate itself to other urban environments, moving as little as 15 meters from its current position up to a maximum observed distance of 800 kilometers. These relocation events can also be triggered by, current containment efforts are centered around swiftly ascertaining SCP-1155's new location and isolating it from public view. When such a relocation event occurs, Mobile Task Force Pi-1 should be immediately deployed alongside local assets to locate the new site as quickly as possible, re-implement containment procedures, and detain any witnesses. Survivors of attacks should be detained, uninjured witnesses may be administered Class A amnestics and then released. 